Holy cow. That is a big critter. I've never seen a muskox in real life, so walking up to it, I was surprised. It was actually bigger than I thought it would be. Impressive beast, for sure. I mean, this thing is going to be a challenge. The animal featured in this show has been ethically harvested in accordance with the laws of Canada's Northwest Territories and those of the Lutzel K. Diné people. We gotta get something to cut. All right, let's do this. When I go looking for a rock to make a knife, I'm looking for something that I can very quickly break that will hold a sharp edge. The best kind of rocks, when you hit the two rocks together, you'll hear that snap sound or crack sound, just like someone dropped a pane of glass. But this is a huge, huge animal, and to try to cut this thing open with stone tools is going to be horrendously difficult. This muskox is the hardest animal I've ever attempted to process. I was just thinking, like, who was the last guy to skin a muskox in this area with a stone? It's probably been a while. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. You feel connected to the past in that way, and it's like, yeah, this is challenging. but. It'll humble you too. As a hunter, something that I take very personally is to respect that animal. We have a full musk ox that gave its life so that we can eat. So my determination is to preserve as much as we possibly can. There are a lot of tools that we can make from the animal, whether it be making a bow drill, making rope or cordage. There is a level of ingenuity, a level of engineering in trying to figure out what different parts of this animal we can use to make those tools that we're going to desperately need. My biggest concern is the meat spoiling. We only have one shot at this. If we mess up and the meat goes bad, we're gonna have a real rough time surviving out here. You need to get a fire going, yes. smoke, yes. and get our meat over yes. us. Getting a fire started without tools is really challenging. We have to make cordage first and then try to ferrule the bow drill. The fact that I don't have a ferrule rod or anything to start a fire with means we have to start thinking back to how primitive man survived and looking at the resources of the land to accomplish this mission. So what we're looking for is the shoelace on the inside. And this is a small one. This will split right here. To go and dig out the spruce roots, strip them, and then braid them together is very, very time consuming. And they don't last very long. We're having one guy hold the bearing block and the footboard, and the other two guys just operate the strap until we get an ember. We keep having the problem with the cordage wearing out before we get enough heat. We really need a lot stronger cordage. I think we should see if we can utilize muskox hair to make stronger cordage. And the hair on a muskox is so coarse and strong that hopefully it won't break every two tries. There's some smoke. It's good. Oh, she's going. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be all you, Rob. I'm just going straight over. It's all you. Yeah. There's what, fire. What, what, there what, it is. Yeah. Yes. Good job, buddy. <laughs> How hard it was. <laughs> Well, that changes the game. Today's day three. We woke up, immediately jumped on fire. It's been 48 hours since I've had anything to eat, but we've got a lot of work to do. There's an entire muskox to, to finish processing and smoke out. What we're hoping to do is build a smoking rack so we can quick dry the meat. Quick drying it, make it last a lot longer, and the smoke will kill all the bacteria that's on the meat while preserve it quite a bit longer. When using primitive technology or primitive skills, you have to, or he had to at that time, just look around and see what he had around. There was no fancy ropes, no fancy knives. He had to go on the fly to build and use everything he had. I'm going to dig out the hillside a little bit and try to put in a stove so that it can stay warm at night because we're sleeping on the ground and it's like sleeping on ice. The whole goal was to do an earth berm shelter, try to get the earth to protect us from the wind and cold. We take spruce boughs and we break them down and set them up so we have beds and a fire inside. 
the cold is coming. If we don't have ourselves prepared, that's gonna be a huge danger. I am making a primitive hatchet. I found this the other day by the lake. We've been using it as a hand axe. Nate found a piece of wood to use for the handle. Your hands get sore with all this type of work out here, and so using something with a handle makes a lot less vibration when you hit things with it. The sinew is really strong cordage. Oh, yeah. I'm making a fish hook made out of muskox bone. center tie it and you set your meat and then I can pull it down and hook it so that it travels through the water like this. But when the fish takes it and swallows it, the hook spins perpendicular to the line and engorges itself in the mouth of the fish so that it can't come out. Everything is more difficult without tools. So we're gonna have to improvise. I'm really hoping to make some fishing line out of sinew. The way you process sinew is to basically cut the large tendons and then dry them thoroughly. And then you peel all that apart and you have a bunch of really little, very strong strings. Strip them into fibers, weave them back together into strings. We're good to go fishing. We do have all this meat here, but your body can only use so much of it without the presence of fat. So fish is mainly fat. It's very, very important to our bodies and to our survival out here that we catch fish so we get that fat to keep us going. Otherwise, we're just not gonna make it to the end. The Arctic is really a harsh place. It's raw. Everything struggles to survive here. Fish on, Ben. Fish, Fish on. on. <laughs> oh, oh my God. That's a big oh. Oh, Awesome. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Finally. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Feels great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. We got a fish. Oh, that's like 10 pounds. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna eat it right now. It's moving from surviving into sustaining with what we had. We know we can catch a fish. To me, that's a step in the right direction towards thriving. Oh my yeah. word. Yeah. Wow. You should have seen Ninja Ben with the club. <laughs> <laughs> that is a honker. Taking out the internal organs of the fish is pretty easy. Most times you can just pull on them and they just pop right out. Way, way different than cutting red meat. Still beating, fresh fish. How is it? That's not too bad. It's like warm beef. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow really tender meat after eating all that muskox. It's like just such a difference. We're really grateful for it. God, my body needed that fat. I could run on like four days on this fuel. You can actually feel your body absorbing the oil that it needs so, so bad. Come here, energy, we're ready to boogie. Final day. Yep. That's it. Final day, we're out. That's it. That's the end. This experience has been challenging. We came out here with nothing. Nothing to make fire, no knives, no tools whatsoever. Having to deal with wild animals and consuming one, I've gained a new appreciation for what we shouldn't waste. I just never really knew the value in certain items off of an animal. 
coming out here with nothing. I have even more respect for the intelligence and ingenuity of our Stone Age ancestors. It's amazing to think of what our ancestors went through and what they overcame to get us where our society is today. We're ready to keep going. I feel like we're leaving on top. <laughs>